Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is I.K. Grande. That's my porn name. <laughs> my name is I.K. Grande. And if you've watched porn in the past 12 years, I've definitely helped to get off. Uh, so today, uh, I have a very, very special guest. Um, we have an award-winning uh, straight porn star who is also a content producer of over 250 fetishes, both straight and gay. And he's uh, the owner of a multimedia production company, Um I just met him last week at the Exotica Expo, and I'm very, very happy to have him here. Uh, Miles Stryker, uh, thank you so much. I absolutely appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me. It's not every single day that we get uh, porn stars in New Jersey, so <laughs> I immediately jumped at the chance when my boyfriend recognized you from a couple of of, of things that you do. So so I want to get into that. I want to get into the things that you do, because uh, it's it's a little bit here, a little bit there, but it's awesome from what i'm hearing and from what i've seen so far uh so what's what's the best way to introduce um if you were how to introduce yourself well i mean there's 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 so many ways to go with that and everything but i mean since this is uh a, a, a show called uh demystifying gay porn yeah. i mean i say that we should probably stick with uh what i do for the the gay side of things okay so uh i mean besides the fact that i'm known for my very very uh sh uh, shock value of uh, not giving a fuck and doing all sorts of pretty much every single thing that people would say you can't do. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I started uh, I started out with uh, femdom. I did a lot of femdom back in the day because I was a straight male uh, and I wanted to get into straight porn. Mm -hmm. But the problem was was that I didn't have the in. I didn't have that porn star girlfriend that would be like, oh hey, here we just let him in. Uh, I didn't have any agent. I have nothing back in me. And I was like, okay, so what do I have that no one else has? I am a psychotic masochist and an exhibitionist. So I said, I am going to do everything that no other straight man wants to do. I jumped on stage and I took 12 foot bull whips was shredded like a cheese grater. And I laughed methodically at people like a crazy person. I was dubbed the porn stunt man, uh, my second year in because I was jumping out of moving cars to make porn films look good. I would show up on radio stations and I would steal the show by, you know, there was like these manly, manly men, uh, taking tasers to their chest because they're just so manly and badass. <laughs> yeah. So I walk up and I pull my ball sack out and I said, we're going to get here anyway. So why not just tase me? They put their shirts on pretty quick. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and then that's how I, I built it. And it went, it went coast to coast as mm -hmm. Miles Stryker, this, uh, well, it was, it was, it was Miles, this submissive, uh, masochist. And then finally, I mean, I've always, I've been trained. Uh, I did BDSM for 12 years. I was mentored by a leather dominant, uh, actually based on the old guard gay leather, mm -hmm. uh, and the BDSM lifestyle. And this was one thing that I brought to the table that I noticed wasn't being done right in porn in fetish porn was, was actual, uh, uh, BDSM. Okay. It was, uh, done very, very wrong. I mean, they were giving cute girls whips who had no idea what they were mm -hmm. doing, that they could be hurting people. Uh, they were tying people uh, a little bit. I mean, I don't want to like bash it, but it just, I was trained very, very methodically and very, very carefully. And I wanted to bring that too. So once my name was known coast to coast, once I was finally able to be trusted enough to, you mm -hmm. know, Hey, mm -hmm. maybe fuck a woman on camera. Um, I, um, I came back as in your face striker. You know, I, I went from that submissive role to a very, very dominant role. And I started doing a lot of very, very heavy, uh, dominant scenes where, you know, you could be considered, uh, uh, rape play and stuff like that mm -hmm. with women. Uh, but then I sat around and I thought about my femdom days. I thought there's so many straight men that are chasing after these these women and when i was just doing femdom it was like i was just a prop so you know as a businessman i want them to stay on my website i don't want them following a woman to the her website so if straight men love being denied by women i mean hell i'm a well-built military veteran guy next door Definitely, I feel like I am a, a gay man's wet dream. Mm -hmm. You got a good look. You do. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why wouldn't gay men want to be denied by a straight man? You know why? Why? Why not be able to dangle it in front of a gay man right here, right there, and see how much I can push that? Mm -hmm. 
And this was during 2017. This was during when everybody was so PC. And I've built such a name for myself because I, I have really, really built my entire company around uh, making people comfortable. Okay. I learned I learned early on that people will work harder if they're comfortable around you. And, you know, I get this crazy rep because people see me on camera and they think I'm this just total fucking asshole. Yeah. And uh, but 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 no, I uh, I'm actually I, I'm very, very. Uh, I, I think I'm all right. When you say you produce for 250 fetishes, what are the what are the ones that like strike you? What are the ones that you like? What are the ones that you're like, hmm, wow, this is interesting. I never knew that people like that. Honestly, uh, it's it's really funny that you say that. Uh, so like, um, my thing was was this was that I have my fetishes, right? Um, I learned very, very early on. I knew very, very early on that, um, the only way to make it in this industry is you got to put your own bullshit aside. You got to realize I, I, people ask me all the time about the women I fuck, the things I do and everything. I, I honestly don't remember that. I remember, okay, who am I trying to please here? I am making love to an audience. Who am I trying to please? What fetishes are we hitting? And how do they want to see it? So that's the reason why I do so many because I do so much research. Mm-hmm. I, I I literally go around and put myself inside the mind of my my consumer. I want to be able to portray their fetishes in a way that I want my fetishes portrayed. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, I won't lie. the The one that got me the most was macrophilia. Okay. <laughs> it, 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 um, to this day, I'm known as one of the most uh, famous giants out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some reason, everybody just goes, I love Miles Stryker's content. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they've loved it ever since I didn't understand it. Macrophilia, uh, the difference between sizes, you might be able to explain it a little more. And on top of that, you came into it, you just said you came into it thinking, like not understanding I don't know what it. the fuck it was. So now, <laughs> do you understand it? Uh, I have a very, very good understanding of okay. it, actually. Uh Teach me. <laughs> like, I'm kidding. Teach me. Well, yeah. <laughs> Teach me. Show me the yeah. way. Because <laughs> I, cause I, I, got, I have a. It's all right. You just got to learn from the gospel of Stryker. Yeah. We can talk about yeah. that later. Oh, we can. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so um, well, my first macrophilia experience was uh, what, 2015, 2016. Mm-hmm. I was a newbie. I was. I had. I was being paid, you know, crap money, drive 250 miles. That's one thing I want everybody to know is that you you don't just jump in this industry. <laughs> you know, you got to show, you got to show your, your, your chops. You got to pay your dues. Mm. Uh, but they had me for another 30 minutes and these people were working me from fucking, from the time, you know, nonstop. So they just look at me and they go, um, you see these like little figurine people? Will, will, will you like be mean to them? I just got done like shooting. I don't know. Uh, I forgot what I got done shooting, but it was it was something I would expect. But I'm like sitting here going, "What? Yeah, yeah. You see these like little figurine guys? Like like will you like step on them, put them between your toes, and you know like eat them? And I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck it, man. I, I mean, I guess I can do that. So I started, I, I got into it. I actually was like, you know, I fucking was like Godzilla through like, like these, rah, and I'm like, oh, oh, yo, oh, oh, I'm missing your legs. Oh, 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 doesn't that suck for you? Oh, look at you. No, what's your name? What's your name? I can't hear you because your mouth's too small to speak my fucking language. You know? Damn. Okay. Like, I just started <laughs> yeah. talking shit, you know? And I'm just like, I'm like sitting here and that, and then next thing you know, they did another one with me. And for some reason, people started to hire me for this. I still had no idea what the fuck I was doing. I'm like, okay. And then, and then there was one where it was like, okay, you shrunk your office down and now you're getting payback. So I'm like sitting here like, like, oh, Sheila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Sheila. Uh, I asked you out on that date, but you didn't think I was a big enough man, but look at me now. And uh, I just come on. I was improv, you know. Yeah, I, I did yeah. nine years or, or at seven years of improv theater before I ever even stepped foot in, on the adult. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sitting here going like, like, okay. So then somebody emails me saying that 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 video changed their life, and I'm like, what the hell? So people mm-hmm. kept hiring me to do this. So finally, my business mind goes, I should go look at 
these ranked what the ranks are mm-hmm. on these giant videos. And I realize that all these videos I'm doing for people, I am like all top 10 clips are me. And I'm like, well, shit, Mm -hmm. I should start doing these for myself. And I still had no idea what the hell I was even doing. I just kept talking shit. And I just kept like ripping little things apart. And then I started doing POV stuff. And and I came up with this huge thing where I like I got this like vape juice from from uh from New Orleans because mm-hmm. that's where all the hoodoo shit is. Yeah. <laughs> and and then some some lady so 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 then I, I blow the vape juice at the camera and then you start shrinking and ah and you know I put this whole backstory behind it and I thought of all this crazy different stuff and and my biggest thing was this was I wanted to I've always wanted to that's the reason why I came up now I have a multimedia production I want to grab people. I don't want you to just want to jerk off. I want you to be like, look at this storyline. Like, look at the the how elaborate this is, and realizing that I came up with that ten minutes mm-hmm. ago. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, so then, what happened was, was I was like, okay, I got to learn more about this. I I don't understand it, but I got fans yeah. out the ass. I got people hitting me up, telling me, oh my god, well, what about this? What about that? What? And I didn't even understand what. These words were, mm-hmm. I didn't know what macrophilia was. Yeah, macro uh, and just. Yeah, macro, micro, and, and all these other, uh, I didn't understand any of it. So finally, what happens was, was people were hitting me up and I started asking questions. And, uh, and then finally somebody said something about size cod. And, uh, I'm actually staying, I actually, when I stay in New York here, I actually stay with the owners of size cat. That's so funny. Uh, well, cause I'm going to be there. I think, uh, you better be yeah, there yeah. cause you wait till you see me. Cause I do performances. Oh there. my God. That's going to be awesome. I do, I do, okay. I do live performances there. I, uh, I, I heckle and destroy people. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very mean though. But then, but then you'll catch me nice because I also give classes there on how to properly choke and slap your girlfriend. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but I also, uh, but anyways, though. So, so what happens is, is I went to SizeCon and I, I found out there was fans that went there just to see me, and I, I was humbled. They were like, "You're so much nicer than I thought." And I'm like, "Well, you haven't kind of paid me yet." So, <laughs> um, uh, but anyways, uh, so. I, I I sat through all every single freaking uh like talk mm-hmm. where these fans got to talk about it. And then it finally hit me. I finally realized, you know, I understand power exchange. I understand feeling small. I understand that because it's the same exact thing. They think of S and M. Think of, uh, you know, uh, S&M, uh, Master Slave, mm-hmm. uh, stuff like that, uh, sadomasochism, uh, all, all that stuff. When, when you really put it into terms, um, you are making them feel small and insignificant, but yet some who don't want to die, they want to feel like little pets in your hand. Mm-hmm. The ones that want to be eaten they want to feel like they gave up their entire lives for you. Hmm. They want to feel like they are now trapped in a situation. You think of cage and confinement. You think of bondage. You think of that. Well, they are now trapped by you. And they've given up their lives to you. Or you've taken mm-hmm. their lives from them. So that that would explain. I've seen videos of stepping. Yes. Stepping on them is also the same thing then. Uh, uh, Taking away. Yeah. Y- their life was for you. Yes, and exactly. For you to take away. Yeah. Huh. Because 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 they are inferior mm-hmm. to you. It's the same thing as the fetishes of power exchange. They the, they've lost their power. They, they, they it's, it's a power exchange where I have now taken power from mm-hmm. them over the outcome of their lives. It, it seems like it fit perfectly. And that's why I still do my giant videos okay. on the same website as I do my uh, my faggot or gay humiliation videos. Okay. You know, and I want to make it on the record yes. Please, about, don't, don't worry. Yeah. about about the word, about when I first started that, I never liked the word faggot. I, I didn't like it. I honestly, you know, because I personally, I, 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 I'm a veteran. Mm-hmm. And I honestly didn't even know that gay marriage was still illegal. 
I came back from Iraq uh, 10 years ago, and I'm sitting here, and when the whole gay marriage thing happened, I was like, yo, what the fuck did I, like, mm-hmm. I thought this is what I fought for. Yeah. You know, yeah, I yeah, thought, yeah. hey, in pursuit Equal of fucking happiness, and, yeah. now who the fuck, it don't, I don't know who the fuck is anybody to tell anybody who to love or who to, mm-hmm. you know, you know, dude, pursuit of fucking happiness. Mm-hmm. So I never liked the word faggot. I never, I never had a problem with it. But the fact is, is this, what I did understand was, in fantasy land, we want taboo. Mm-hmm. We want, we 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 want to go places that yeah. we don't get to go on the streets. I know that uh, submissive men who love humiliation love to be forced by. They love to be talked down mm-hmm. to. They love shit mm-hmm. talked to. So, as soon as I came out with that first video in 2017, when fact it was probably the, the worst, worst yeah. word <laughs> that you could say, and I knew it, and I sat here and I I I, I debated it, I debated it, and I sat around, but I I had such a great reputation because everybody knew me as being a person who just makes everyone comfortable. Yeah. And then I come out with these videos where I am just relentless because I told myself if I'm gonna do this. I'm going to do it yeah, right. You got to go hard. Because because the the the, the fan base I'm hitting, they they're going to know if mm-hmm. I'm sitting back and holding back and being a little bitch about it. So, I mean, if we're going to if we're going to go and do this, we're going to go fucking hard. And I went there. If <laughs> if there was a place to fucking go, <laughs> I went. And out of nowhere, it just it just it it, it grew into this huge thing. I mean, I had gay people just hitting me up left and right going, going, oh, my God, thank you. Like, thank you for having the fucking balls to do it. Mm. Like, I know that there is, I know there's, there's these, these cash masters out there. Yeah. There's all these people that go, oh, hey, I'm pretty. I got abs. So pay me money, faggot. Blah, blah, blah. It ain't yeah. like that. And that ain't, that ain't what I'm about. What I'm about is I call it, I call it the puppet master. I will use my words and spider my way into your head. And I will, I, uh, what, what I always tell people is this, is that if you want to grab an audience through your words, you better be fucking intelligent because no one wants to feel inferior to somebody that's not as smart as them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I make sure I use a bunch of syllables I make sure that I ramp. I don't just go right off the bat. Hey, you fucking faggot, 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 yeah, faggot, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 I You work up to it, huh? I work up. I ramp. And slowly but surely, you hear my voice get louder, louder. It turns every clip into a movie. You know mm-hmm. how you have a rise to a climax. Hero's journey, yeah. And then, well, I'm supposed to break you down. Mm-hmm. Break you down. And then you get through that whole moment, and then you jerk off, or I deny you jerk off or something like that you know we we go through a session but it's not about coming necessarily i mean you're gonna orgasm through the session mentally i'm gonna mentally make you come (laughs) so many fucking times it'll be unbelievable you can jerk off later thinking about your mental coming yeah but in the end you get to a certain point where you you start to shed and show arrows that's what I call them. I call them, uh, uh, as men, we're tribe animals. And we're supposed to be in tribes together. And mm-hmm. somewhere along the line, some fuckboy said it's it's gay for men to hug each other and cry things out. Which, that is actually the most masculine thing mm-hmm. out there today. Because I also teach masculinity. Uh, real masculinity is being in tribes. And throughout life, us as men, we get arrows in us. And straight men turn to women for validation. Well, the thing is, women are too emotional Mm -hmm. to even help you with that. You're supposed to turn to your other men to pull out those arrows. So as I'm breaking you down, I'm revealing layers and layers and layers of arrows that have been stabbed in you. An arrow is, you know, your mom turned your back on you Mm -hmm. one day, you know. never removed, right? Yeah, exactly. So once those are revealed, you know, we start crying it out. And uh, and then what happens is, is you come to me and we're crying it out and then we talk it out and we remove this arrow and you're suddenly, your your burden gets lifted a little bit. You're a little bit lighter. You, you don't understand because you just were called faggot a million times and you were mm-hmm. beat with a bunch of whips and everything. And then you cried, but then suddenly 
you feel better. And it's about building you back up. And because I got to know you and got to understand how stressful your fucking life was. I mean, because all honesty, you're coming to me to let go. Yeah. You're coming to me because once you come to me for one of my sessions, fuck the world outside. I got that. I will take care of all your problems. You just worry about taking care of what the fuck I tell you to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's where that whole daddy complex will come from, too. You know, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so, so you're, like, you're like a therapist too. Man. This is it, therapy. It's, yeah, yes. I, it was. I yeah. I, I mean, it's exactly what it is. In the end, what we'll all tell you the uh, prodoms and everything. We uh, we we were basically therapists. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reason why I also learned this was that when I came home from Iraq, this was how I got my therapy from Iraq was was through this. That's why I did found down for so long. <laughs> so oh, yeah. you know, and the thing was is that. And then I'm going to build you, but I'm going to build you back up and I'm going to help you. And then we're going to talk about things and you are going to now leave this session stronger. You're going to leave this session ready to go face your boss in the face the next day, mm-hmm. ready to go to work, ready to handle things, right? And, and knowing that, you know, it was like, you know what? Because masculinity is providing strength. That's what it is in the end. And... I like to I like to be an example of what true masculinity is in a world where people are saying masculinity is bad. Mm-hmm. Because masculinity mm-hmm. is not what they call toxic masculinity. Toxic, yeah, what they call toxic masculinity is too much femininity in a male. Because today boys are born without fathers. Okay, I see what you So mean. I explain to women all the time that I'll never understand what what it's like to be a woman. I'll never understand the burden of being a mother. Mm-hmm. So don't, so I will never sit here and tell you how to be a woman. It's not my place. So don't you sit there and tell me how to be a man. Good point. Jesus. Let's talk a little bit about your websites. Cause I do want to plug a little bit. Uh, I want people to be able to go to your websites, um, and find them. What, what websites do you have right now? You have a couple or are yeah. they all on one? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Got a couple. And, uh, if you guys go to one, you're going to look at the other one and go, what the hell? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the one that we mainly want to really, really plug here that everybody, uh, go and uh, we've mainly been talking about is called straight gay humiliation.com. Okay. Uh, that is actually pretty much my creme de la creme right now. That is one of my best selling websites mm-hmm. and it's literally just me talking shit. I tried quitting smoking one time. Now smoking's a huge one on there. Smoking, human ass, trail, sort of stuff. It's, a, oh, it's mainly oh, okay. a POV website where I just talk shit to you, but I put you in it. And there's a lot of storylines in there and everything. And sometimes I'm dominating uh, other gay men in there and all that stuff. Uh, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a straight man who just appeals to the gay audience. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't do gay porn per se. Mm-hmm. You won't catch me actually fucking. Um, um, I mean, that's just, I mean, it's one thing, uh, just, I'm not able to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, I sure as hell can, uh, empathize with, uh, with my audience mm-hmm. and understand what they want to hear. And, but then also understand what they need to hear. Um, so straight gay humiliation.com. Definitely check it out. Um, then there's milestriker.com. Sooner or later, milestriker.com, I've been saying this for years, is going to become like an, uh, a standalone. Yeah, it's like gonna, an umbrella. Almost, yeah, right? it's going to okay. take, you, take you everywhere. But for now, milestriker.com is my first clip site. Um, it went from a femdom site into the psychotic, crazy mind of the things I can come up with a site. So you quite literally have femdom. You have me doing all sorts of stuff like literally that that site has so many fetishes on it and so much there you cannot go to that website type in a fetish and not find something for you please 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 if you want to support me and support the things i do the one thing that i ask people is go join my only fans only fans uh, dot com slash miles striker and smile striker with eyes m-i-l-e-s-s-t-r-i-k-e-r because people Stop trying to spell it. Anyways, um, I ask people to do that because when you join my OnlyFans, it honestly, like, yeah, um, I got a lot on there, but mm-hmm. on the other hand, too, like when I, I just feel like you, you, if you can give six ninety nine a month, you know, it it, it helps. Mm-hmm. You know, it shows me that they, that you're willing to put in something mm-hmm. that you support mm-hmm. my work. Um, 
And then on top of it, I mean, Twitter, you can follow me at Miles Stryker. Um, it's where you see all the crazy antics and all the stuff I get tagged in. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just my, my, my Twitter's pretty crazy. I, I, I like my Twitter. I, 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 I just learned how to use Twitter when I started this industry. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, you know. It's, but, it's a good time to start Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, definitely. Um, I got I got other websites. I got youngfemdoms.com is one that's just mainly femdoms and PO, uh, POV-based. Um, uh, I got a few other ones, but really, mainly, it's straightgayhumiliation.com. Mm-hmm. Um, young femdoms for femdom, uh, strictly, uh, milestriker.com for all you straight kinky or even gay kinky crazy people who just want to see some crazy ass shit. <laughs> just, I mean, even normal shit. It, yeah. it, we go from like just normal boy girls to just outland tickling, like just go in there and type in a fetish. <laughs> all that good stuff. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Ganande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, Discord. And if you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn where you can help support this channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. (laughs) 